Okay, today's stuff we're going to be learning is Nazir Daf Nun Chet, another complicated daf. Um, I will warn you, it, in the end, we'll simplify it, but the how to get there is, is a little bit complicated. It's a daf full of drashot. Um, and with that, we'll get started. Just a reminder, Siyum is next week, Hashem, on Wednesday night on Zoom or Wednesday, wherever, whatever time it is by you. Uh, sorry, Thursday. You should. In Israel, some seums are happening Wednesday, some Thursday, some other days. So check the schedule, some on Tuesdays. Uh, Tuesday and the Zoom will be next Thursday. So looking forward. And on Friday, we start Masachet Sota, just in time for Pesach. Um, okay, which you think, what's the connection? But you'll see the connection. There's a whole bunch of Dapim in the middle of Sota, tapping in the middle of Pesach, all about Rosh on Pesach. Okay, starting with Daf Nun Zayin at the bottom, Amubet. Lema hakafat kol arosh What we saw was this issue of hakafat kol arosh, meaning if you, the whole issue of taking off your peot, if you're a man, is it just taking off the peot and particularly leaving because it says lo takifu, don't make this circle. Lo takifu peav It's a very weird, should have said lo tigalchu peav roshchem. Doesn't say that. This is low takifu. It sounds like maybe they're concerned you're making this circle around your head and without the payout, and that this is some haircut that the Torah doesn't want you to have. If that's the case, then removing all your hair is not a problem at all, which if you're a Mitzora and Azir, right, you don't have to worry about it because it does, it, forget about the fact that we say, the positive commandment overrides the negative. You don't even need that because it's not even a sore to take off all your hair, including your payout. So, is this a machloka tanaim? That's what we want to know. Is there a machloka tanaim about whether hakafat kol arosh, if you take off all, or whether taking off all your hair is a sur because you're also taking off your peot, or is it only forbidden if you're removing only your peot and leaving everything else? So that's the Gemara's suggestion. Why don't we suggest it's a machloka tanaim? And this is going to start us on a very complicated Gemara where we're going to basically bring these two bright toes. I'll give you the structure so that it'll help you keep in track here. Structure of today's stuff until almost the end is the following. We're going to have two bright toe. One is going to learn on the same word. One is going to learn one. One, is, one thing, one is going to learn the other. We're going to suggest that the machloka between them is, is removing all your hair a problem because of the peot? Or is it not at all? Because peot is only a problem if you only remove the peot. Is that the machloka between them? To which we're going to say, no, that's, the mach, that's not the machloka. They all agree Okay, taking off all your hair is not a problem. Then we're going to reject that answer as well. And then we're going to say they all agree that taking off all your hair is a problem for the payout. Okay, If you remove your payout and you remove all your hair, it's actually a problem. Obviously, when there's a mitzvah like mitzvah, something like that, where you're supposed to shave, we allow it. But that's the gist. So we're going to have three ways of understanding it. Once we get to the third way, until then, it's not as complicated. Once we get to the third way, we're going to start asking ping pong questions against both of the two approaches. And then we're going to have three questions on each. Okay? And that's when it's going to get a little bit complicated because we're going to keep ping ponging back and forth. And it's not even so clear, oh, right? Every time we have to introduce which one are we asking the question on and it just gets a little bit complicated. And then there's a problem because the second two, the, the, the third question on each is very hard to understand with the shot of the Gemara and to which the different ways of reading the Gemara that also complicates things as we've seen in many, many Sugyon and Nazir, which is not exactly typical of Gemaras where it does happen once in a while, but in Nazir it happens an awful lot where it's very unclear where the Gemara is going. And that leads to multiple interpretations about how to punctuate, which part is part of the question, which part is part of the answer, which which line goes where. There's a lot of um, lack of clarity. That's going to make the, particularly that makes it hard because it's hard for us to understand it. If it was, right, the commentaries all try to, come up with some sort of question and what they're asking, what they're answering, but it's not so easy. Okay, let's start with our Gemara now. Lema kafat kol So let's suggest it's a machlok etani. Ditanu Rabbanam. I'm going to share screen because it'll be helpful for today. Um, we're going to follow along in the study. So now we have this, um, we base it all on this pasuk. Vaya bayom You might remember this, right? With the Nazir. On this, uh, I'm sorry, the Mitzorah, the leper. Yigalachet kol saro. On the seventh day of his purification, he shaves off all his head, his hair. And then instead of just saying all his hair, which would have been simple, it goes on to say, 
את ראשו ואת זקנו ואת גבות עיניו, etc. Okay, but basically we're concerned with the words ראשו and זקנו, your head and your beard. So right now we're only concerned with ראשו. We're going to have two dress shows on what, why it says the word ראשו. Once you say all your hair, what do you need ראשו for? And some of this, by the way, we've seen before. מה תמוד לומר? Right, why does it say ראשו? לפי שנאמר לא תקיפו פאת ראשכם, well, it says you can't take off your peot. So yachol af mitzorah ken. You would have thought maybe the mitzorah can't remove his peot either. Well, meaning when the mitzorah shaves off all his hair, shave off everything, leave your peot. Tamud lama rosho. That's why it says rosho. You can take off every all the hair on your head. In other words, this comes to say, and this is why I wrote it in blue here, mitzorah doche lo ta'aseh apa kafat avot. The mitzvah of mitzorah overrides a positive commandment, overrides a negative commandment, Right? You can't take, remove your hair, but when you have a positive commandment to remove your hair, that overrides. And this is a principle in general. And the principle, according to this Tana, is learned from here. Betanya Idach, the other bright says, Rosho, and now we're on the second part of the chart. Rosho, the next column, Matamud Lama. Why does it say Rosho? Now, instead of saying that overrides Lota Kifu, it says, Lafishin Amar Gabe Nazir Ta'ar Lo Yavo Rosho. You cannot put a razor on your head if you're a Nazir. So, yachol af Nazir Mitzorachim. You might have thought, even if you're a Mitzorah, let's say you're a Nazir who became a leper, which we've been talking about. Maybe you can't remove your hair when you do the shaving of the Mitzorah. You can't remove your pale. I'm sorry, you can't remove your hair at all. Forget pale. I just got confused for a second. Maybe you can't remove your hair at all because a Nazir can't remove his hair, right? Your hair on your head. So, maybe you can't remove the hair on your head. Maybe the rest of your body, but not your head. Tamud Lomal, Rosho. Rosho comes to say, even if you're a Nazir. Now, the Nazir, we're going to talk about this in a minute, the Nazir actually is commanded both in a negative commandment and in a positive commandment, not to remove his hair. Number one, it says, Rosho, don't pass a razor over your head. Number two, it says, Kadoshihiya, the Nazir will be sanctified, Gadel Perasa Rosho. He's supposed to grow his hair long. So now, if you go with this option, what this is teaching you is, the Aseav and Mitzorah, and I put it right under here, even though we're not here yet, but the Aseav and Mitzorah overrides a lota ase and an ase, a positive and a negative commandment, okay? Specifically by Nazir, anyway. And we're going to get to that all later, okay? Whereas, according to the first opinion, the Mitzvah ase only overrides a negative commandment. It doesn't necessarily override a negative and a positive, right? When there's a negative and a positive, it's obviously much stronger. And yet, the mitzvah ase and mitzvah overrides it, according to the second guy, but according to the first drasha, it only overrides a lotus. So just keep that in mind. We're going to deal with that soon. So now they're going to say the following. The machloka between them must be, my love tanaihi. It's machloka tanaim about what? Lemanda amar mi nazil hasavar, the one who learns it for nazir, says the following. Hakafat kol arosh loshma The question is, why didn't the second Tana learn the same thing as the first Tana? Isn't a Mitzvah, but why take it to a, a limited case of Nazir, which doesn't happen all the time? Why don't you just say it overrides the negative commandment of Lota Kipu Pe'akoshchem, which is much more basic? So the reason you didn't you choose that Trasha is because he thinks that for a Mitzvah to remove all the hair in his head is actually not forbidden at all. And therefore, you don't need a drasha to tell you, you can do it even though it's forbidden, because it's not forbidden. And therefore, if the pasuk isn't, you know, they're assuming that that's the default. But if there's no need for that default option of lo takifu, because it's not actually forbidden if you remove all the hair on your head. So when the pasuk is coming, it's it's coming to tell you that the mitzvah of the mitzvah overrides both a lo of don't put a razor on your head for a nazir, and the mitzvah ase of his obligation to commit com, to fulfill the positive commandment of grow your hair long. And that's what it's doing only because, again, this is the first option which we're going to reject, only because he holds the main thing that we were trying to prove. Hakafat kol arosh is not hakafat. It's not forbidden to remove all the hair on your head. It's only forbidden to remove the peyote if that's all you're removing. But if you're shaving off your whole head, it's not a problem. The idach, but the first Tana holds, hakafat kol kafa. Because the first Tana learned Rosho comes to override lo takifu, obviously lo takifu is forbidden. Why is lo takifu forbidden? Because even though you're removing all your hair, it's still a problem. And therefore, kiatakra, that's exactly what the Pasuk is coming for, limit chelav greida. 
It's coming to push off a regular low tasse, which is something that's applicable across the board. Mitzvah overrides low tasse, and it's learned from here. That's the first stage. Second stage, Amarava, like I said, there's three stages here. And then within the third stage, we're going to have three questions each. So three is the magic number today. Amarava. Rebbe says, no, 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 you got it all wrong. None of them think that there's actually, it's prohibited for the Mitzorah to remove all his hair. Obviously, we're going to have to explain them what's the drasha, the first drasha coming. The second drasha makes perfect sense because if there's no, it's not forbidden to get rid of all the peot with all the rest of your hair. That's why he took Rosho to some other place to the Nazir about the Ase But what about the first guy? Well, they come up with a creative explanation, Rava has. What's the Pasuk for then? The Pasuk is saying, Rosho overrides Lotakifu. Now, Lotakifu is not forbidden when you take off all your hair. So why do you need a Pasuk to tell you? You can do it anyway when obviously you can do it. So the Pasuk is coming to tell you what if. Now, there's different ways you could shave off all your head, right? The hair on your on your head and your, and your pale. You could shave off all your hair and then your peyote, and that would be fine. But what if? What if you decided, I'll remove the peyote on my head first. So for a minute, two minutes, three minutes, however long it takes, you've removed your peyote. And then after that, you shave your head. So he keep means you first created that circle haircut, which is what's actually forbidden according to this interpretation. All right, we're here now. He keep ulevasof gilach. So first, you took off the peot, you left the circle momentarily, you were about to get rid of it, the rest of your hair. But for that minute, right, you did something wrong, right? This happens all the time where like you do something for a second, right? Even though you're planning to do something that's actually permitted, but you know, you're doing it just for a second, does that really count? Like, is there any significance the fact that you had that haircut for one minute? So came on the ilu since if you had done it all in one shot, you wouldn't have been obligated. What the drasha of Rosho is coming to teach you. Rosho, it's a mitzvah to get rid of all of the hair in your head. And even if you do it in the wrong order and you first do your peot and then you shave the rest and for a minute you had that haircut of a round haircut, it's not forbidden. Why is it not forbidden? Because ultimately you're going to remove all your hair. You never intended for that to actually be a haircut. It's just you're in the process of doing it. So the Gemara rejects this and says, no, that's ridiculous. Like uh, the Gemara, the, the Torah is going to write this word in order to tell you that. First of all, it would be a little weird because it's a rare, right? It's like a weird, in, if you do it in that case, but they have a much bigger problem, which is something we've seen before. Didn't Rish Lakish say, anytime where you have a mitzvah that's and a mitzvah lotase, you have a, positive, which is supposed to override a negative commandment. So what do you do? Do you do the positive commandment or do you not? Well, it depends. If you can find a way to do both, then do both. In other words, can fill the mitzvah asay without transgressing the lotase. But im lav, if you can't, then yavo asay v'yedchet lotase. Meaning, the asay overriding a lotase is only as a last resort. Now, in this case, this is not a last resort. We're basically it shouldn't be that if I shave my peyote first and leave that haircut for a minute, it's permitted because I should, it basically we should tell the Nazir, make sure you first cut your hair at the top and then take off your peyote. Otherwise you're going to end up with a circle haircut for a minute or two. And it doesn't matter how long you basically did something forbidden. So the drashat coming to teach you, don't worry if you do it that way, it won't be going against lo takifu, doesn't make any sense because it should be going against lo takifu because there's a way to do it in a way that's permitted, so it wouldn't be permitted. So this option doesn't really make any sense. So, which the Gemara is back to option, it now is moving to option three. Okay, so again, just to review, we tried to say that why does the first guy say Rosho overrides lo takifu? Because he thinks lo takifu is actually forbidden for Nazir. Because taking all the hair off on your head is a problem. And the person who doesn't use it for that drasha and uses it for the nazir must be because he thinks that hakafa kol is not even hakafa. And that's why he doesn't even mention it, right? Because taking off all the hair on your head isn't even forbidden. Then we tried to say, maybe everyone thinks it's not forbidden, but then we really couldn't explain the first brayta. If you really think it's not forbidden, then you definitely don't need a drasha to tell you 
it's not forbidden. And if you try to say it's trying to tell you if you did it in the, the wrong order, it would be okay anyway, that doesn't make any sense that it would be okay. So moving now to option three, and this is the option that's going to stick. So option number three is, um, everybody agrees that removing all the hair on your head is actually a problem. So now who makes the most sense? The first drasha, because the first drasha says, don't take, remove the hair on your head. And that's where we learn it from. So the problem is, why didn't the second drasha the one who learned ase doche, right? Nazir, why didn't he say ase doche peot, which was a more simple, right? Because it's only one lotase. Why did they jump to the Nazir where it's ase velotase? So the real question is, or the assumption is, that he must learn it from somewhere else. And that's why, in other words, he must learn that a regular mitzvah ase overrides just a, a negative commandment when there's an ase and a, and a lot ase, he learns it from some other place. And we've actually seen this before. So man, so question number one is on the second bright, huh? Man demokim l'kala mitche lot ase ve'ase, the one who says, right, every time they're going to introduce it, the one who says this. So the one who says that the Pasuk is coming to override the nazir, which has a positive and a negative, Lav grade aminale. Where do you get it that just a regular lotase will be overridden? Now you could say once we override an ase and a lotase, you don't need a pasuk. So that's why the question seems to be more from a from the other perspective, which is what, as I said before, what motivated him to say that it overrides an ase and a lotase? It should have come to teach the basic kalacha that an ase overrides a negative, that a positive overrides a negative, which would have been more simple. Lo takifu. The fact that, that it doesn't say it's coming to override lo takifu must mean he learns it from somewhere else. So where does he? And then once he learns this principle that a positive overrides a negative, he'll use this dress out for something else. This word brochure. Yalaf migdilim, migdilim. Damar kra lo tabashanes v'tanya lo tabashanes hagdilim tasel chamehen. A very famous psukim, and we saw this not so long ago. The Pasuk in the Torah in Dvarim Kavbet says, don't wear shatnes, right? Samer and Fishtin together. The next words in the next Pasuk are, Gdilim ta'aselecha, right? Make yourself tzitzit. So the way they learn it is, well, if right now the tzitzit have tchelet in it. Tchelet is made from wool. So what if you're wearing a, a cloak, you know, a four-corner garment made of flax, linen? What are you going to do with it? So you need to put your samer, right? Your your trelet chutim. There's a whole debate. How many of the chutim need to be made of samer? But whatever it is, there are chutim that need to be made of samer, of wool. So basically what the Torah is telling you is, well, samer ufishtim, they're going to read it as dilim taselecha. Make your dilim from samer and fishtim. Your tzitzit can be a mix of wool and linen. Okay? That's what it's telling so there we learn the mitzvah asef tzitzit overrides the negative commandment of shanis. So now they say, okay, well, if once we have that drasha, obviously, what are we going to ask now on the first drasha? Why are you learning ase dochelot ase, positive overrides a negative, from rosho if you could learn it from tzitzit? So in other words, right, as soon as we answer one question to one, that question becomes a question on the other. So now we're on question number one, on bright to number one. So why doesn't he learn it from the G'dilim Pasuk? Well, Amar Lachai, he could explain, he needs that Pasuk for a totally different drasha. Now we're going to get totally off topic. We're going to learn something about Tzitzit. There's nothing to do with our topic. It's just you need the juxtaposition, or the, the smichut, the fact that Lota Bashanez is right next to, and Semer Fishtin Yachdav is right next to G'dilim Taselacha. It's going to teach you some special law about Tzitzit. What is it? The Rabbi Ramikti. Rabbi says there's a bit of a problem in this pasuk, and there's a bit of a problem in the text here. Most people take out the words p'til t'chelet that are coming up, so I'm going to read it without. V'natnu al tzitzit ha'kanaf. You're going to put the tzitzit on the corner. Well, the way they darshan this is min kanaf. It means that the tzitzit, the, the strings that come out of the tzitzit are supposed to be the same material as the, clo the clothing, as the kanaf is the corner. The corner is obviously the same as the rest of the, the, clo the shirt. So let's skip those words because they don't make so much sense here and many, many people take them out. So first it says, right, 
it sounds like it's supposed to be from the type of clothing it is. Let's say it's silk. So your strings are supposed to be silk. But then it says, Samu Fishin Yachdav. Now, again, Samu Fishin Yachdav, they're reading as, even though that's not in the same pasuk, they're reading as wool and linen together. That's what you should make your Gedili out of. That's what your string should be made out of. So, how does this work? What if it's silk? Then your strands are supposed to be silk, not Samu Fishin. So, how does it work? Well, they now break it into two categories. Samaru fishteen potlin ben biminam ben shalobimina. If you have wool and linen strings, you can put them on any type of clothing. Okay, if it's silk, if it's any other material, you can put it on there. But shar minim. But if you have strings made of other materials, biminam potlin shalobiminam ein potlin. If your strings, presumably, we're talking not of the trelet ones. The trelet ones have to be wool, but the other ones can actually be put. Only on, if you have silk strings, they can only go on a silk garment. They can't go on anything else. So that's what they learned from Semir Fishtim, that they have a unique law about Semir Fishtim Yedilim, right? The strands that are made of Semir Fishtim are like, you know, work anywhere, but other types of materials don't work anywhere. And that's a totally different drasha, and that's what he does with that, which is why he needs Rosho to teach you that amidst a positive commandment overrides a negative commandment, Okay. Let's just stop for one minute. I want you to look at the second chart. Okay, what I did here was at the, the second chart, I wanted to organize this better because the first chart, you could kind of like shows the flow, but you kind of get lost in the flow. So we're up to now, and ignore the second bullet point at the top, but Rosho, just to summarize, so you see this very clearly, Rosho comes to teach us according to the first Rosho, uh, right? That the positive commandment of a Mitzorah needing to shave overrides a negative commandment of not removing your payout. Because it's not sure to remove your peyote, because we just said everybody holds, you can't take off your peyote, even if you're removing all the hair on your head. The second drasha is saying that the rosho is coming to override in a nazir, even though a nazir can't cut their hair, because there's a positive and a negative commandment, still the mitzvah can override that. Then, lo to dilim So according to the second drasha, you needed to teach you that a basic positive commandment overrides a negative commandment, which is why he didn't need Rosho to teach you that. So he used Rosho to teach you something else. But the one who says that Rosho already teaches you that, you don't need Shatnez to teach you that. So that teaches you some other halacha about tzitzit. Okay, that's what we're up to. So that dealt with the first question. Now we're up to question two. And you'll see in a second which one we're asking the question on first. Hi, Tana Demapik Le Rosho, Le Lav Greda. Okay, now we're on option one. The one who teaches Rosho for just a regular lotase, lab greater just means just a lotase, meaning not an ase and a lotase, not a positive and a negative. So now the question is, where does he learn that a mitzvah ase overrides an ase and a lotase? In other words, remember, that's what the second guy learned from the mitzvah, but he doesn't have it by mitzvah. Where is he going to learn it from? Now, soon we're going to see that this isn't actually a principle that applies across the board, okay? Positive commandment, usually, almost always, maybe there's some exceptions, I don't remember. Positive commandment overrides negative commandment, okay? We saw that by um, the Yibum also, right? The positive to do the mitzvah of Yibum overrides the fact that it's forbidden to marry your brother's wife, okay? We saw that here with Shatnez, we saw it here with Mitzorah, okay? It comes up in different places. Again, different people learn it from different places, but that's a principle flies across the board. Here, we're going to ask, where did they learn it? The assumption is that we're talking about by Nazir. And that's why I added in parentheses here, in Nazir. Because it's not a principle that applies across the board. Generally, a misfat ase, a positive commandment, is not strong enough, so to speak, to override both an ase and a lotase. Because, right, think about a scale. Right there, you have two things going for it, and this is only one. One misfat ase can't override an ase and a lotase. So how do we know that it overrides by Nazir? Because we're assuming that he doesn't disagree with that basic halacha. It's agreed that even a Nazir cuts his hair if he's a leper. So where would he learn that from? So, nafgalemi skano. We're going to learn it from the next word in that pasuk. Et rosho, that's kano, his beard. How are we going to learn it from this? Titania. Skano matamulama. Why does it say skano? Lefishin emaru pe'at skanam lo yigalechu. Okay, now we're talking about a Kohen. A Kohen is not allowed to shave his beard. Now, no one's allowed to shave their beards, but there's a special commandment given to the Kohanim also, not to shave their beards. Yachol, right, when we say shave, again, we're going to see this inside, but we mean shave with a razor. 
יכול אף כהן מצורע כן. You might have thought even a kohen who's a mitzor can't shave with, right, can't cut off his hair, uh, his beard. Talmud lomar skano. Ah, what do you have here? Skano comes to override the mitzvah of, right, the, the prohibition of removing their beard. From here you learn mitzvah ase, yoche ase velotase. Wait, where's the mitzvah ase? It's just a lotase. Well, it also says by kohanim, I actually put it for some reason on the other side here, and we're going to ask about it on this side, but the Pasuk says, In other words, after it gives all these commandments for the Kanim, one of them is don't shave your beards. It also says you're sanctified to God. It's very similar to Kadoshi Yegadel Perasar Rosho, right? By the Nazir. You're sanctified, therefore you have to do this positive commandment of growing your hair. So Kadoshim Yiyu basically means it's a positive commandment to keep all of the negative commandments, right? Everything the Kanim was told not to do. There's also a positive commandment to keep them. So from Skano, we learn, that comes by Kohen, and then obviously when we learn from Kohen to Nazi, okay? Whether or not we could do this, we're going to get back to soon. But right now, we're going to assume if by the Kohens, Kano comes to say, you can, the Mitzorah can shave off his beard, even though it's forbidden for the Kohenim to shave off their beards by a positive and a negative commandment, there you learned it also to the Nazi. So now they're going to say, um, mm, so the obvious question is, if you can learn it from Skano, then why does the person in the second column, right, the second drasha, why does he learn it from Rosho? If you can learn it from the Kohanim, you should learn it to Nazir. So you don't need both Skano and Rosho to teach you the same thing, to which they answer with a counter question. And this is why I said it's not so clear you can learn it from Kohen to Nazir. According to you, that we that even you agree, and right? now we're moving to Amubet. Dilo ate ase vedache lo tase vase. You in general, this isn't a principle that applies. In other words, we don't say, okay. So you want to say learn from Kohen to Nesi, but you agree with me. He says to the guy, the guy of the first drasha. In other words, again, it's not the people who said the drasha talking here, but it's the later people saying is if they're those people talking, according to you. You won't learn from Kohen to the rest of the Torah because it's not true. Everyone knows that generally a positive doesn't override a negative and a positive. So you, according to you, right, Leilaf mi Kohen didache. If you want to learn from Kohen to Nazir, why not learn from Kohen to everything? Ella, so therefore comes this, right, the answer and explains mi Kohen lo yafina. It's clearly, this is all part of his answer, okay? So again, the second Tana who basically says you need a special drasha by Nazir and won't learn it from Kohen, from this Kano, because he says, in general, you can't learn from Kohen to anything else. Why? What's your reason why you, according to you, meaning according to first time, according to first time, who says, Kano comes to teach you, right? And you want to ask me why I won't learn from there to Nazir? Well, I'm going to ask you, why don't you learn from there to every single mitzvah? And the answer is clear because this, okay, now this is all about what can override what. An ase can only override an ase and a lotase, right? When there's, again, it has to be weighted, right? So if you have two against one, obviously two is going to override and then the ase won't be able to do it. But in the coin case, it works. Why? Because the lotase is weakened. Why is it weakened? Not to shave your beard is weak. Why is it weak? Because it's eno shave bakol. Talk about equality, women and all that. It's a very interesting answer. It's not for women. It's only for 50% of the population. That makes it weaker. Once it's weaker, that's why the positive commandment can override the negative and the positive. Because the negative and the positive are very weak because they're only applicable to 50% of the population. So, you know, if we do a mathematical equation, cut 50 off the assay, cut 50 off the low assay, and we're equal. Okay? But you can't learn that for Nazir where it's not the case. Okay, so we'll get to Nazir later. That Nazir also has its own weaknesses. But right now he's going to say, that's why I need a special pasuk by Nazir to say that the Ase overrides the Ase and Lotase because you can't learn it from the Kohen. And that's why I need Rosho, even though maybe Skano is a good drasha, but I need Rosho anyway. Okay, so we now have, right, that okay, let's just go back to this bottom chart. Skano, according to the first guy, is teaching you, okay? Now we assume, 
Right now, it's also going to teach you for the second guy, but soon we're going to reject that. Okay, we'll get back to that soon. So now they say the following. Um, okay, so now, according to, we're now on guy number two, we keep kind of, it's not a ping pong one, two, one, two, one, two. It's more like we started with two, we went to one, we stayed with one, we went back to two, we, then we were at two, we went to three. You know, we went to question three on number two. Like, it's kind of going like that. Anyway, that's not so important. So the one who says Rosho, they keep introducing, right? Who are questions against? The one who says Rosho is for Dazir, which is Russia number two, Lamalis Kano. So basically, according to what I just showed you in the chart, if you can't learn from the Ase do Chalota Se and Ase by a Kohen to Nazir, because Kohen isn't Shavebekol, but once you have Rosho, according to Drasha number two, if Rosho is coming to override, say, in Nazir, the Ase overrides an Ase and a Lotase, then theoretically, the Ase should override an Ase and a Lotase by Kohen also, and you shouldn't need a Drasha for that. So basically, what we're going to say is you're right. It really isn't needed for that. I would say sort of isn't needed for that, but you're going to see, according to him, it's going to teach you something different, okay? So I told you question number three is where things start to get more complicated and there's different gears of problems, like what's the actual text? What's the actual question answer? I'm going to try to explain this as best as I can in a way that seems the most clear to me. Um, so now, now, my verse of the Gemara puts this in parentheses, but I'm going to read it because otherwise there's no real Kano mentioned here. So it's a little bit tricky, but it's a little hard to read with it and it's a little hard to read without it. So I'm just going to read it and I'll explain how I think it makes sense. So why does it say Kano? Okay, so the first thing is, even though we don't really need it to, Kano is telling you the Mitzora. Over, if you're a Kohen Mitzora, you shave your beard anyway, even though, right, there's an Asa and a Lotase for you not to do it. Well, I'm there, but it's not really coming to teach you that basic halacha because we would know that basic halacha anyway. But once you take that as a given, that the Mitzora, Kohen, has to shave, even though it's forbidden to him, now, okay, stop for a minute. We're going to teach something else, and then we're going to come back and connect those two parts. This is a sugi we already saw, which is, okay, we saw this a bunch of the people ago. It says to the coin, he cannot shave, okay, the word shave specifically is used by his beard. So, what if he uses scissors? Right? This is where we get, it has to be a shaver that's forbidden. Scissors is okay. And that's what we use electric shavers. So, you might have thought if he, now this is a Kohen, but we're going to get in a minute to all of, all of the men. You might have thought if he uses, Scissors, which are not a close shave, right? As close a shave as a razor, you might be liable. No, Tamulamar below Tashkit. Now they quote the Pasuk that was given to as a commandment to everybody else. There it doesn't say don't shave, it says don't destroy. So now they say, well, e lo tashkit. if you just look at lo tashkit by itself, you might have thought if you pluck it out with tweezers, which destroys it. Or you use a plane, which is also some other implement that we get the hair off in a very close manner, but not be considered words of shaving, so to speak. You would never say using tweezers is shaving. Chayav, you might have thought you'd be chayav because it says lo tashrit, destroy. Any way you destroy it from the follicle. Well, tamun lo mal, kanam lo yigalechi. Therefore, it says specifically, don't shave, right? Don't shave. So now they say, eze giluach sheyesh bo hashkata, heve omer Okay, so between the two, between the lo tashchit and the lo yigalechu, we, we conclude the only possible way that it's forbidden is with a razor. What does this have to do with anything? Well, okay, and I, I kind of wrote this out. I know it's all in Hebrew, but I'll explain it. Basically, what Kano is teaching you is that a mitzora has to shave with a razor. Do you remember? We had this whole sugi already. We learned this whole thing. How does it work? Because... What it's telling you, number one, and this is why I said we are learning this in the end, that a Kohen Mitzora shaves, even though it's forbidden for him. Now, if a Kohen Mitzora shaves, even though it's forbidden for him, how is it forbidden for a Kohen? Only with a razor. That's stage two, right? A Kohen is only forbidden, that's what we just proved, with a razor. Well, if a Kohen is only forbidden with a razor, and we believe Rish Lakish, who says you can only have 
this mitzvah would be overridden if there's no other way to do it. Well, then theoretically, the mitzvah could have shaved in some other way, taken off his hair with scissors, and we would have fulfilled the obligation. From here, you'll learn that it must be, he does it with a razor because we need a pasuk skano to teach you that even a coin mitzvah shaves. And if even and if coin's only forbidden to shave with a razor, then it must be the mitzvah has to be with a razor. So in a very convoluted way, we basically need skano according to this the second drasha, we don't need it to teach you ase doche, ase below tase. Because we already know that by Nazir, from Nazir, you can learn to Kohen because Nazir is for men and women, right? And Kohen's only for men. But uh, not Kohen, but the, the Isur to shave is only for men. So from where's the Isur to shave your head if you're a Nazir is for men and women. So what we learn from Kano is, yes, it's coming to teach you that it overrides, but from that, we derive something much more important, which is the Mitzorah needs to do his shaving with a razor. That's what we learned from Skano. Okay, so it was a little complicated, but that's the simple, that's what we learned from here. Now, that was complicated. This is even more complicated to understand. And, and here, okay, I, I wrote question three. I'm, I'm now on the, I'll bold it, okay, highlight it. We're on question three of on the first Rasha. Okay, we're now gonna have a new question. I set it up as question and answer here, but some people actually start the answer from different words. It's, it's even unclear which words start the answer, which words are part of the question. There's many different ways, and I'm going to go with Tosfos explanation, even though there are certain weaknesses. Whenever there's a lot of different explanations, there's often weaknesses in each commentary, but we'll go with this. So now we're left with our last question, and this is the last complicated part of today. We're left with our last question on Drasha number one. This is already a problem, this question. What they're saying is if Rosho, which according to right to number one, was coming to teach you, Ase overrides Lotase, right? Mitzora overrides, don't shave your payout. Well, then why do I need Rosho and why do I need Skano? Now, the truth is you need Skano because what did Skano teach you? Ase overrides Lotase and Ase. Okay, that's why this question is a little bit difficult. They're each overriding different things. But there seems to be this assumption here. We're going to read this now as this, this is where it gets complicated. Some people read this as part of the question. Some people read this as the beginning of the answer. And I'm going to read it like toast, but this is part of the question. Once you have one of these words basically saying, what they're basically saying is the following. What they basically want to say is, from this pasuk, once you're going to say that anyone can shave, it seems to be not distinguishing between whether you're a regular man and you have an iser of baltakifu, you know, don't shave your, your peot, or whether you're a nazir or whether you're a kohen. In other words, once it includes regular people in kohanim, it must include nazir as well. And it doesn't, again, I, I can't define the question so clearly because it's not so clear what it is, but you don't really need two different dress shows. It seems like the Pesach is not distinguishing. It seems like the Pesach is saying everybody needs to shave. Anyone who's a Mitzorah, which would include Kohen, Nazir, all of these, you shouldn't necessarily need two psukim to teach that, okay? Two words in the Pesach, Rosho and Skano. That seems to be the question, even though it doesn't 100% match the words, but that's why, according to Tosfo, it sounds like it's mitre lav greda, and it sounds like it's mitre la lota seva ase, and it's all shakul, and you can learn everything. In other words, you should be able to learn nazir, you should be able to learn kohen, and should be all included here, and you shouldn't really need to drush up. Again, it's not perfectly clear, so if you didn't understand, also commentaries didn't, under, it was hard to understand. So now the, they say the following. Here's our answer, though. And from the answer, I think this is what motivated Tosfo to say this was the question, because the answer is going to basically be, you can't learn Cohen from Nazir. You can't learn Nazir from Cohen. You need separate dress show for all of these. And you can't learn from them to anybody else. Cohen mean Nazir, no, lo yalef, shaken yesh, no b'sheila. If you just had Nazir, let's say, and they're assuming right now that wrote, what, what they're really assuming, and this is why I put it here. Okay, if we go down to the second chart, Rosho, until now, we said, according to the first dress is teaching you, the ase overrides a lot ase of Balta Kipu. And according to the second dress the ase is doche and ase and lotase of nazir, right? That nazir can shave even though he's a leper. But the way Tosfan understands this question is that they're now jumping to say, even the one who darshan the first rasha would also say that you can learn from Rosho, the ase is doche, the ase and the lotase of nazir. How he gets there, it's complicated. But if you take that as a given, 
that he thinks now that Rosho includes both a regular lotase and an ase and the lotase of Nazir, then the question is, why do we need a pasuk by Nazir of Rosho? And why do we need a pasuk by Skano for Kohen? It's really one and the same. You should just need one. Okay. The tricky part is how exactly he got to that according to the first drasha, Rosho also includes the Nazir and the Ase and the Lotase. So now he says the following. Once we understand at least that's the question, the answer is pretty clear, which is Kohen mi Nazir, you can't learn Kohen from Nazir because again, this whole issue of an Ase being able to override an Ase and the Lotase all depends on how severe the Ase and the Lotase are. Well, the Nazir is not so severe. Why is the Nazir not so severe? Because you can always undo it. Right? You can go to a chacham and say, get rid of my nizihut, and then it's actually not forbidden for you to cut your hair. So that's why you can't learn from there to Kohen. Nazir mi Kohen lo yalef, this we learned already, shken lav sheno shavai bakol. The prohibition for the Kohen is only men, right? To shave your beard. Whereas for Nazir, it's a prohibition for men and women. And therefore, and therefore you can't learn Nazir from Kohen, you can't learn Kohen from Nazir, and now we're going to learn why you can't learn from both of them to all other Easterites, because we already said this is only true for Nazir and only true for Kohen. Otherwise, an assay does not override a positive and a negative. So Nazi, and then they say, when you don't learn from both of them, because we just showed each one has makes it weaker, right? Either because it's not everybody or because it's um, it could be undone. And therefore, you can't learn from here to the rest of the Torah. Okay? That's the end of this sugya. Before we start the next part, I just want to do a quick review. So the second chart is helpful in reviewing, but let's just go back to the first chart for a quick minute. What we did today, even though I know you probably got a little bit lost in the flow, so let's just review. Rosho, we have one drasha, which said Rosho comes to me, override the ase of, the lotase, sorry, the negative commandment of lotakifu. The second drasha said Rosho comes to override an ase and the lotase of nazir. Then we suggested maybe the machloket is, is taking off all your hair actually forbidden or not forbidden? And the one who thinks it's not forbidden doesn't need Rosho to say it overrides Lota Kifu. But we rejected that. Then we tried to say maybe nobody thinks hakafat kola Rosh is hakafat. It's not Asr at all. Well, then you have to explain the Rosho Drasha, which we tried, but that didn't work. So we rejected this. Then we said, everyone agrees hakafat kola Rosh is hakafat. But then we had a whole ping pong back and forth. You know, if you learn ase do chalot ase vase, then where are you going to learn? Where are you going to learn um, ase do chalot ase from? Okay, from Gedilim. What about the other one? Where's he? Oh, Gedilim he uses for something else. Then we said, okay, if you use rosho for love, where are you going to learn ase and lotase by Nazir? And then, ah, oh, he learns it from this kano of the Kohen. And then the other guy says, you can't learn it from Kohen because Kohen is not Shabbat Bakol. That's his rejection. Then we say, of course, and then we got to this third, more complicated question, which was, again, according to the second guy, what do you need Rosho and Skano for, right? And then according to the first guy, also we said, right, why do you need Rosho and Skano? They both kind of came to answer, why do you need both? So what we ended up with, and here I'll show you on the next chart, is that Rosho, according to the second guy, is really coming to teach, I'm sorry, Skano is really coming to teach you that a mitzvah needs to shave with a razor. And not necessarily that the ase is doche and ase and elot ase by Kohen that we could have learned from a nazir, but it is saying it overrides it. And from the fact that it overrides, it teaches us that it has to do with a razor. And according to the second drasha, well, I'm sorry, the first drasha, the first um, brayta, Rosho teaches you both ase doche elot ase, and it really teaches you the halacha of the nazir. And Kano is adding about the Kohen, and we need Nazir and Kohen because you couldn't have learned one from the other. That's a simple review of the Daf, even though I know the Daf was not simple. Okay, we have a very short section that we're going to really deal with much more tomorrow. I'm just going to run through it right now, but it continues into tomorrow, and we'll deal with it more in depth. It's a very interesting, fascinating topic. Can a man shave hair in his body, particularly in places where women shave their hair? And is that considered, says Lotilbash, um, Geber Simlat Isha, a man is not allowed to wear a woman's dress. We're going to get into a women, what they can't do. And in fact, Rabbi Yippi Clymer, and it'll go up hopefully later today or by tomorrow, has a, it gave a shiur this week, the Makhshavash on second thought about women and the army and can they hold weapons? Is that violating a Torah commandment of Lo Yobash Isha Kli Gever? We usually think of it as Kli Gever, clothing of men, but, but some of the commentaries think it's weapons. And how do we have women carrying weapons? How is that permitted? So it is very interesting. Or anyway, we'll just finish up our sugya. Amarav. Mekel adam kogufo You can shave all your hair on your body with a razor. 
to which the Gemara says, Metibe, how can you possibly shave all the hair with a razor? It says in a bright that if you take off the hairs from under your arms and in your private areas, which is something that women often did, you would get lashes for that because that's doing things like women. So how could you say you could do it with a razor and then it says you can't do it, right? You can't do it in certain areas. So they answer, with a razor, it's forbidden because that's the way women do it. With scissors, it's okay. Yeah, that's a little weird though because it said, you can do your whole shit body with a shaver, the razor. And that seems to be the, what they just said is not permitted. So the Gemara is going to say that. They say, He said, you can't do it with a razor. How could you say that means scissors? It meant something that's like a razor, meaning you could shave your whole body as long as you use scissors, not a razor. Even though he said razor, we have to explain it not. Otherwise, it makes no sense. So now we're going to bring another statement. Which you could have really brought the bright and the commentaries ask about that because the bright said the same thing. Metive, but really they want to ask, right? A Tana maybe could hold like a Tana, but the Gemara is going to say, but here's a Tana Itic source that goes against Rabbi Yochanan. For a man to remove hair on his body is actually not part of the Torah prohibition. It's just something the rabbis instituted. So you don't get lashes if it's something the rabbis instituted. There's no such thing. Lashes is Torah law, to which the Gemara answers, my lokenami tikamar midrabanan. There is rabbinic lashes. It's called makat mardut. It's not called loket. But when he said loket, he didn't really mean loket Torah law. He meant loket lashes by rabbinic law. Okay, that's all we're going to do today. We're going to deal with this topic much more tomorrow because this topic, today we had enough of um, our topic in the first part. So we're going to leave this all over for tomorrow, but a fascinating topic in and of itself. Wishing everybody a great day.